Hello, what is up guys? Eman from Peso Smart PH here. Welcome sa open bagong episode. Shout out to all the podcast listeners as well. I appreciate you all. Today, let's talk about the local market, local stock market dito sa Philippines. So, nag-close yung PSEI or yung index ng Philippine Stock Exchange at around 6,502.12. So, change niyan is around 122.95. So, nag-rally siya ng around 1.93% in just one day. And then all shares nag-close at around 3,506.28. So up siya ng 48.88 points, which is around 1.41%. And all throughout financials, industrial, holding firms, services, mining and oil, property, lahat yan up. Pinakumbaba is yung mining and oil. And then yung total volume is around 678 million. And then total trades, 105 thousand and total value is around 8 billion pesos tapos yung nag-decline is around 79 stocks and change is 43 and yung mga nag-gain or advances for today is around 118 stocks all right so ngayon nag-check kasi ako kanina ng portfolio ko sa call financial and medyo down kasi karamihan sa <laughs> karamihan sa holdings ko is gme7 ah. but let's talk about that later and chinek ko lang no yung technicals dito sa call financial I know na this is this is somewhat useful sometimes kasi dati nagche-check din ako dito. And may mga magagandang recommendation sila. Especially nung nasa pseudo bear market tayo after nung nung crash nung 2020. And I was kind of leaning towards this then but for the most part I wasn't really relying <laughs> on these to like choose to to choose my stocks and when to buy. As an example, example, let's uh, go. Philippines All, Sh- All Share uh, Index, diba? From the 52-week high, it's down by 23%. And the trend mode niya is down. So, I would say, we're in a bearish state tayo ng market or bearish phase. And the recommendation nila is for you to sell. Like what? Why? <laughs> I mean yes, yung rating na na initiate nito is 427 pa. But let's check. Ano ba yung mga bago? Yung mga bago. Uh, AUB Asia United Bank. So down siya ng around 8.33% from the all-time high. This might make sense especially kapag magandang entry price mo. Pero yung 52 week low naman ito is 42.50 lang and yung highest in one year is 48. I would you sell now. <laughs> diba? And then let's take a look. Let's take a look at like ito Iremit. I mean, I'm not really a big fan of this stock and I don't know a thing about this company. But down siya ng 46.26% from the 52 week high. So that is like the local top in just in in, in a span of one year. What? And yung trend is down. Why would you sell? Paano kung doon ka sa taas bumili? Sabihin natin, 1.40 ka bumili. So, down ka ng around 40 plus percent sa portfolio mo. Why would you sell now? I know na these indicators are not in any way. Kung baga, like, dapat sundin mo palagi. But it doesn't really help the the newbie investors. Na kapag ka nakita niya, oy, red na, you have to sell. No. <laughs> That's not always the case. That's why kapag ka nga mga bago pa lang sa investing, sa stocks, sinasabi ko palagi is just PCA, peso cost average or dollar cost average and find stocks that you're willing to hold in the next 10 to 20 years. All right? Don't try to day trade lang no? pag ka bago pa lang kayo sa investing kasi most likely you will lose money. All right? And tandaan nga natin, sinabi ni Warren Buffett dito sa investing game The first rule is to never lose money. And then your second rule, don't forget rule number one. Alright? And then ito, ASEN. ASEN is a very good stock in my opinion. Opinion ko lang yun guys ha. And it's down by around 52.08% from the 52-week high. And yung trend mode niya is down nga. And call is uh, recommending you to sell. But yeah, let's take a look no, kung ano yung price niya. Kasi yung rating initiated is 424 pa. So, April 24. So, this ma- this might be outdated. So, yan. So, yung rating nila is nung April 24 pa. Yeah, it, it might, it might uh, saved you a couple of a couple of thousands of pesos if you sold here nung April. Wait, nasa na ba? April 24. Wala na palang, wala palang trading nung 24. Tama ba? Yan, nasa daily chart naman ako. Nasa yung 24. 
25. Yeah. Sabi natin ng 22. Ah, hindi, 25. Kasi 24 nila nirelease yung rating, di ba? So, if you didn't sell at that time, so they saved you around... Around... 19%. But, sa macro view, kung sa all-time high ka bumuli ng 2021, yung sobrang hype, like, you're down, you were down 36% in the first place. ba? Diba? It saved you around 19%, but if magkakaroon ka ng cut loss, <laughs> hindi dapat ganito kalaki. <laughs> diba? Kung nagtatry ka mag-trade. But, if what you did was just DCA, or peso cost average as the price is, is going down, you're gonna get like a better chance once mag-pump na ulit yung market and maging bullish na ulit. And remember, this is a very young stock, itong ASEN. But I truly believe na this is a very good growth stock to hold long term. Kasi this is an energy corporation na they want to have like green sources of energy scattered all over the Philippines. So, yes, it's still in like early stages. Kasi diba, kumbaga nag-rebrand sila kasi inacquire sila ng Ayala. Kasi iba, iba to dati, ibang kumpanya to dati. Iba yung pangalan, ah, Finn maata to, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah. So, if you, if you believe sa fundamentals ng company, sa business, kung sa tingin mo is mayiging profitable sila in the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years, then it doesn't make sense to sell now. Especially if you bought at the top. ba? Diba? And and dami rin kasi ng hype. Lalo na kapag umakit yung price. Ah, and then you have to buy, you have to buy. So, the FOMO kicks in. So, kapag ka nga, what they call this, kapag ka na fomo kayo, or like, for example, may nag-recommend sa inyo ng stock or ng asset na, huy, bilhin mo to. Bilhin mo na to kasi baka, baka may iwan ka, sabay ka na. Always, like, take a second. Let, not, not really a second, pero like, think. Diba? <laughs> think for... Uh, itulog mo, di ba? Parang, parang pag may decide ka na ano ba yung kukunin kong trabaho, di ba? Nakakuha ka ng dalawang interview and then tatanggapin ka nila pareho. And then, yung isa, mas maganda yung sweldo, pero, pero hassle naman yung trabaho, di ba? Like, kailangan mong everyday lumabas. And then, yung isa naman, mas, mas maliit ng konti yung sabi natin 10%, no? Mas maliit ng 10% yung sweldo. Pero, like, work from home lang naman and then mas, mas free, mas free ka, no? Na, like, gawin yung gusto mo sa ito kasi nasa bahay ka lang so mas marami kang free time and then less expenses kasi hindi, ka, hindi mo kailangan lumabas so diba al- alin ba yung alin ba yung pipiliin mo for me since ayoko naman talagang lumabas palagi of course I will pick the the job na work from home but of course before you decide kailangan you know pa, sinasabi palagi diba na you know, itulog mo muna yan <laughs> diba tulog mo muna para para clear diba clear yung utak mo so Uh, mas kumbaga hindi ka emotional <laughs> kapag ka magde-decide ka and I I think well I believe na same thing sa mga investment decisions natin kasi kapag ka minamadali ka minamadali ka nung tao or nung nag-shill sa'yo nung asset or nung investment uh, it's not really good ba diba? parang pinipressure ka nila na ah pag hindi mo to binili hindi ka yaman. <laughs> that's wrong. That's that's not how you like advertise or that's not how you teach someone to invest. Kasi diba, yun, na-fomo lang sila. Diba? For example, ay, ay, ano, ASEN, ano, tataas pa yan, mayiging, ano, mayiging 20 yan. Diba? In the next year, 20 pesos na yan. And bumili ka, 13. O ano na ngayon? Down na ng, down na ng kalahate yung yung portfolio mo, di ba? Kung naniwala ka dun sa nagsasabi. Pero, if you believe dun sa, sa stock, sabi mo, okay, maroon ako ng konting technical analysis. analysis. Uh, medyo overheated ngayon, so mag-aantay muna ako. So, di ba? Kunyari, andito na, 13 na. And then, nag-dip. Sabi mo, uy, sige, okay, okay, bumili. Nag-10 pesos eh. Sige, bibili ako ngayon. And then, umakyat. Hindi ba? Okay, tuwa ka na. And then, eventually, bumagsak ulit. Kasi, macro, naging bearish na ulit yung market. So, ngayon, inisip mo, oh, ba't ka na ito? Ba't ka na ito? Ba't ka na tumataas? Diba? Sabi, sabi yung bibente. Pero, wala. Ah, ikaw, nagtiwala ka lang sa fundamentals. So, habang bumababa, nag- nag- bumibili ka pa rin. Kasi, you, you truly believe dun sa, dun sa company, dun sa stock. 
And then until now, you're still DCAing. So, yung mga nabili mo dito sa dito sa 10 pesos, dito sa 9 pesos, dito sa 8, 7 pesos, 6.61 na lang ngayon. And di ba, ngayon nga, green day siya. Well, week pala to. Yeah. Green week sa ngayon kasi, well, first day pa lang naman ng trading. So, ibig sabihin, umakit, umakit talaga siya from uh, from last week's close. Di ba? And medyo nagra-rally nga rin yung market from like last week kasi hindi na, hindi na ganun ka-grabe yung FUD after the, you know, after the elections. But still, mag-usapan natin yung GMA7 and yung ABS kasi they are plummeting. And grabe din yung fear ng mga holders or mga investors dun sa mga stocks na yan. Ito, isa pa. Uh, EEI. EEI. So, down siya ng 56.65% from the all-time high. Well, hindi naman all-time high, but 52-week high. And then, they're saying na down yung trend Kasi nga, medyo nasa bearish state tayo or bearish face tayo ng market. And then, sinasabi nila na isell nyo na. And ito, kapon lang yung rate. <laughs> Why? Why would you sell now? Paano kung doon nga sa tok-tok bumili, di ba? Ano nga, 8.65 ka bumili. And then, ibibenta mo na ngayon. Why? So, kunin natin yung GME 7N, di ba? Natin, skin si ka ano, bumili. Or sabi natin, sa tukto ka talaga bumili, 16.66 na bili ka pa rin. So, down ka ngayon ng 38% sa portfolio mo. Well, pero kung buwang baba, habang, di ba, habang buwang baba naman, tas nag, nag the dollar cost average ka, nag peso cost average ka, bababa din yung down mo, di ba? Although, it, it, like, you know, it, it plummeted real quick after, after nung X date nila. But, para sa akin, macro, like long term it's still gonna it's still gonna recover even though yes hindi pa natin nahanap yung bottom kasi like every single day <laughs> parang lagi lang siyang bumabagsak but yeah we'll see so sabihin natin PLDT yan eto up siya tas hold ba? so kita nyo yung risk dito yes maganda yung long term hold yung PLDT but since kagaling lang niya sa 52 week high niya Bakit may ho-hold? <laughs> Minsan hindi ko talaga maintindihan kung, kung paano nila ito nagagawa. Maybe yung approach ko talaga is iba lang. But, I don't know. I don't know, man. Yung globe. Yung globe. Ito. Yung globe is down from the 52-week high ng, ng 40% and they're telling you to sell. Why? <laughs> hindi ko talaga gets... Guys, why? Bakit ganito? SCC. SCC is a good stock as well. Pero hindi ko na siya hinuhold kasi uh, hindi siya environmentally friendly kasi mining and, and coal power. So, yes, like majority pa rin ng power natin, ng kurente natin is nagagaling sa coal. But, you know, it, it's time for us to like change. Ito range trade daw. Well, that makes sense. Pero down pa rin siya ng 19.29%. But yeah, I think, I think ito nag-agree na ako sa kanila. Nag-agree na ako sa kanila dito. <laughs> Pero ito, SPC. Gusto nyo lang ipabenta sa'yo. Ano ba ito? Yung recommendation nila para bibili nila ng mas mura sa'yo. <laughs> SPC is, is a very good company rin in my opinion. And down siya ng around 16.98% from the 52-week high. Pero ito, medyo delay din yung, ano, yung rating. So, 426 pa. But yeah, sabi nila, down yung trend and then sell. Bra. Then ito, ito weird though. SFA Semicon Philippines Corp. I'm not familiar with this stock. Pinaglalaro lang ng mga traders and day traders. So sabi nila, up na daw. Pero down siya ng 30.25% sa 50-week high. Pero sabi nila, take profits na. So sino ba yung benefit talaga dito? Pagka sinunod nila to. I still don't get it. I mean, if 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 kayong mga day traders yan is merong insight dito, please let me know sa comments kasi I don't understand this. <laughs> Na kapag ka down yung port mo, you have to sell. I mean, down yung stock, you have to sell. Why? I mean, you, you really wanna like save some capital para makapag-enter ka sa panabagong trade? I mean, di ba? Kaya nga may stop loss at cut loss eh. So, for example, mahit lang yung nag-down ka ng 5%. Yung sa stop loss mo lang yun. Ba't mo pa abuti ng 28% kung di ka naman mag-hold ng long term, di ba? <laughs> Kasi short term talaga, sobrang volatile ng market. Pero... In good businesses, good stocks, in time, it, trend, it trends up with time. 
Diba? Kasi they will continue to make money. They will continue to give you dividends kung dividend paying stock yung binibili nyo. And if they continue making money, continuously din sila magbibigay ng dividends. And every single year, tataas yung stock prices nila kasi nabibigay sila ng dividends. <laughs> Ganun lang siya kasi simple. Alright? And now, let's talk about Gemi 7 and ABS real quick. So, yan. Yung Gemi 7 is really plummeting. So, from the all... Sabihin natin, huwag na yung all-time high. Sabihin natin mga 15.76, di ba? Down na siya ng 38.17%. Actually, ako nga, like, almost... Kano na ba yung na-miss out ko na profits if I just took profits dito sa top. But yung kasing kahirapan eh, di ba? Hindsight 2020. Ang hirap malaman. <laughs> Sino pong mag-aakala na babagsak to, di ba? Nang ganito. Like, yes, may mga nag-predict, ah, hindi, after election, babagsak yan kasi media, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, <laughs> Jimmy 7 is a profitable company. And, kumbaga, na-monopolize na nila yung free, you know, free air TV broadcast media industry dito sa Philippines. And, consistently, nagbibay sila ng dividends since 2008. So, why wouldn't you hold this stock long term and yung franchise sila was renewed by Duterte last 2017 pa and bigla last yon ng around 25 years so yung runway nila is sobrang haba so you can kumbaga parang milk <laughs> the dividends even though bumaba ibigay nila ng dividends since syempre magsa-slow down din yung like revenue nila since tapos na yung elections but i don't think na super magsa-slow down din yung revenue Kasi na-release na rin yung kanilang I'm gonna I'm just gonna create like a new episode na dedicated sa Jamie 7 but yeah anyway. So, 'di ba? Iniisip ko palagi, oh, I should have sold here. Pero hindi ko matatanggap yung dividends, 'di ba? Or, why? Oh, yeah, nag-dividend play na lang ako. Nagbenta ako dito, 'di ba? I think ito na yung last day eh. Or ito na yung X date o oh, tama, April. Tama ba? Hindi week pala 'to. Sinasabi ko. So yan, so yan, dito kasi nagkaroon ng malaking gap eh. April 20. So ba kung nagbenta ka dyan, well ako, no? Ang laki pa rin nung, ano ko, ang laki pa din nung up ko. Pero yung cost basis ko kasi, is sobrang baba. Nasa 8, 8, 7 pesos lang yung cost basis ko. So up pa rin ako kahit na 9, 9.76 na lang yung GMA 7. That's why I'm still, I'm still holding. And I'm not really gonna sell in this kind of market. <laughs> kasi... Yung RSI is in in the shit. <laughs> it's in the in in down the drains, bruh. Why would you sell there? Diba? In technicals, it doesn't make any sense to sell. It is a weak market na to. Diba? And the last time that this happened was March 2020, no nagka pandemic. And tingna natin, diba? Kita nyo naman yung naging explosion yan. 224%. And if you go here sa present, it's still up pa around 100%. So, double pa rin from the lows on 2020 nung ganito yung level ng RSI. Yeah, I'm not saying na, you know, just for hope yung naakit siya eventually kasi ganito nakakababa yung RSI. But, you know, there's still a chance na it would go down and back to these levels. <laughs> but if it goes back to the, these levels and then like yung dividend sila next year is you know ganun pa din <laughs> kasi nga yung first quarter nila from 2021 and 2022 is almost the same parang nag increase pa ng around 6 or 7 percent yung income but yeah, hindi natin alam kung may sustainable yan kung like same thing ba yung kikita nila ng 2021 and mauulit nila yung 2022 we don't know that Baya, kung yung forecast is making same lang, then around 1.45, 1.35 ulit yung bibigyan nilang dividends for next year. And kung mas muwa pa to, sa, cur sa current market price, no, around 14% na yield ng 1.45 pesos per share na dividends. And if muwa pa siya, then mas tataas lang yun. So making like, I don't know, 20% yung yield ng Jimmy 7. <laughs> and again, yung fundamentals is there. And ito, sobrang irrational lang talaga nung ginagawa ng market, di ba? Kita nyo naman, short term, sobrang irrational niya. And I think, ngayon lang ulit nangyari itong 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, ito, hindi pa naman nagko-close to kasi ngayon week to. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, pang fifth week na to na red possibly kapag uh, by Friday nag-close ulit siya ng red. And the last time that happened, 
Actually, yung apat na sunod-sunod, eto. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Eh, lima rin pala, no? Before mag-COVID pandemic. And, di ba, nakita na nga natin kung paano nag-explode. Then, last time yung nangyari ulit, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 eight weeks ng 2019. From August 2019 to September 2019. Puro red closes din yung GME 7. I mean, that might happen here again. But, people will buy this stock. Okay. Yeah, I know nag in nga, 'di ba, yung FUD is andiyan kasi like parang na nagdedelikado no? <laughs> yung yung media, yung free speech, but I think short term FUD lang 'yan. And yeah, wala naman talaga nakakaalam kung ano yung mangyayari in the future. All we can do is magkaroon ng forecast and you know, buy wonderful stocks at a discount. And ito nga, bumalik siya sa 9.76. So, para kang bumalik. No? Para kang nagkaroon ng time machine. June 7, 2021. Diba? Yung time pala na nag-explode yung GME 7. And again, I'm not sure. Uh, wala, wala tayong crystal ball. And I'm not saying na magra-rally tayo after nito na, you know, to the moon na. <laughs> But that is a possibility. And also, yung possibility is pwedeng bumagsak pa ulit and magsettle down ulit sa mga ganitong prices before. But I don't think again that that will happen. Because nga na monop almost na monopolize nila industry. And yes, meron mga bagong players yung kay yung kay Kiboloy and yung kay what they call this. Since parang yun yun yung papabura na ni ano ni BBM and yung kay Manny Villar. But we'll see, we'll see. Ang tinitingnan natin ngayon is yung potential runway pa rin ng GME7 na sobrang tagal pa. And consistent nga sila magbibigay ng dividends and ng income. Mag-generate sila ng income consistently. Alright? And lastly, let's take a look at ABS. So yun, from 2020 then ABS was on a good run. So sabi natin ito na yung bottom. So nag-high siya ng 138% from the lows ng 2020 ng around 6.92 pesos. And yan, nag-trade din siya around 6.4, 16.48. And given na wala silang franchise. So diba, imagine kung mabalik yung franchise sila. And I don't think they're really interested to get that again. Kasi di ba parang na-award yung ano nila. Yung, what you call this, yung frequency nila dun sa uh, kay Manny Villar. Dun sa media company ni Manny Villar. And yan. Uh, eto, kita natin yung sharp decline din. No? Na nag-enjoy siya ng sideways na trading. So, range bound siya around 16 to around 12. Well, sabihin natin, huwag, huwag natin include yung mga week. Sabihin natin, mga 15 yan. 15 and 12 pesos per share. And then, nagkaroon nga ng sharp decline dito after mag-conclude yung election. So, down na siya ng around 22% from that you know, sideways trend. And again, uh, I believe hindi pa rin super profitable yung ABS. Actually, I haven't like seen their financials yet. Yung sa GME pa lang yung nabasa ko earlier. Kasi kanina lang din naman nalabas. But yeah, kita natin kung paano maging irrational yung market sa short term. And then again, guys, I'm not saying na tataas na tayo after ito. Kasi nga, nobody knows. Nobody knows, alright? Unless mag-settle down yung market na, ah, okay, sige, this is a very good stock to buy. And this will generate further um, income in the future. Future, maganda yung, you know, potential revenue in the future. Then, yeah, people will buy it. And syempre, hindi natin ma- maalis yan or madidiscount yan yung mga speculators. Kasi yung mga speculators, syempre, wala, wala, wala rin mga shorting dito sa atin. No? So, no one really benefits sa pagbagsak ng stock prices. Uh, except sa ating mga, you know, hindi naman opportunist, no? But, like, paano ba natin sasabihin yun? Uh, sa ating mga long-term investors siguro, <laughs> na pagka bumaba yung stock prices ng isang stock na gusto natin, no, na hinuhold na natin matagal, we buy more. <laughs> And I think, balik tayo sa GME7, I think it's it's a good time to buy. For me, ah. For me, ah. Pasa risk, risk tolerance ko. Kasi, like, worst comes comes to worst, like, it goes down to, like, what, 5 pesos? So, another 48, 50% like, downturn. E, paano ko next year nga is, what they call this, mag, magbigay ulit siya ng dividends na sobrang laki. ba? Diba? So, kung, kung sa 5 pesos yung cost basis mo, magbigay sila ng kahit piso lang, no, na dividends. Tama ba? Oh, 
di ba? 5 pesos. Sabihin natin yung cost base mo. Base na ng piso na dividends divided by. So, 500. Wait, tama ba? Ba't, ba't mali math ko? Ang ginagawa ko? Kasi, 1.45 ngayon yung dividends. Divide natin sa 9.76. So, ayan. 14%. Ba't hindi nagmi-make sense yun sa 5? So, 14.85%. So, yung 1.45, divide natin sa 5. Kaya pala, <laughs> ginagawa ko 5 ko dinidivide kanina. So, yung dividends ay 1 divided by 5. Yung cost basis mo. So, 20% ibibigay niya sa'yo. <laughs> Bobo ko naman. <laughs> May paling ginagawa ko yun. So, diba? Andyan yung, andyan yung upside. Eh. Sa piso lang yun. Diba? Paano kung, paano kung 1.45 yung ibigay ulit nila next year? Divide mo sa 5. Again, worst case scenario lang to guys. I don't think mangyayari to. 29% yung dividends ibibigay sa'yo na yield. Like, you will outperform almost everything in the market. And dividends pa lang yun. E paano kung umakit ulit, di ba? Sabihin natin. And guys, dubious speculation lang to. Haba na nung, nung episode natin. But, and guys, kung podcast listener kayo, like, punta kayo sa YouTube no, para makita nyo yung pinagagawa nating drawing-drawing nito sa, <laughs> nito sa chart. So, yan, di ba? So, kung mag-5 man and then, you know, mag- bumalik sa ganitong price ulit, na-double mo yung pera mo. Eh, paano ko umakit pa ulit? 224. <laughs> so, wag lang laging downside yung tingnan natin, no? Kasi, we're buying wonderful stocks. Para sa akin, no? wonderful stock at wonderful prices. <laughs> and I think talaga, undervalued na siya at this current market price. Actually, yung level ko nga ng pagbili is around 11 and 10 pesos. Eh. And then, nakita ko nga, ba't ganito? Ba't sobrang bumabagsak pa rin? And yeah, uh, peso cost average is your best strategy here. Kasi nga, ayun, mag-continue maging profitable yung Gemini 7. Habang bumababa siya, di ba? Kahit na sa taas ka pa bumili, 15 ka bumili, habang bumababa siya, nabili ka pa rin. So, bababa ng bababa yung cost, ano mo, cost basis mo, di ba? And again... I-reinvest mo lang. No? Kunyari, nabigyan ka ng dividends kayo. Reinvest mo lang sa GME 7. Kasi nga, mababa na yung prices niya. Unless yung pag i mo. For example, kinuha mo yung capital mo. Tapos sabi mo, ay hindi, mag-speculate ako sa Bitcoin. Diba? Kasi kaya na ito yung outperform yung making performance sa GME 7 and yung dividends na binibigay niya. I mean, that's another option. But, you know, I wouldn't really recommend that. Kasi you have to... Uh, you have to be knowledgeable about crypto and like yung speculative nature niya. And syempre, mas, mas risky and mas volatile yung crypto in comparison dito sa stock market ng Philippines. But yeah, again, <laughs> from the all-time high, we're currently down 40%. And that's really big. Even like bigger downfall in comparison dito sa lows ng March 2020. Diba? Sabi natin, ito local top. Nag-bottom siya. 22% lang. So again... <laughs> Very good time to buy in my opinion. But, of course, not financial advice. <laughs> Still have to trigger yung buy order, no? If, if gusto nyo talaga. And kung long term naman, I think you you can't really go wrong dito sa GMA7. Alright, guys. And then natin yung episode here. Sana may natutunan kayo. And if umabot kayo at the end of this episode, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Huwag niyong kalimutan, smash yung like button. Sobrang nakatulong yun sa algorithm ng YouTube. And if you want more videos like this in the future, subscribe ka na sa channel ko and ring the notification bell. Also, I'm on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So, follow niyo ako doon at M1PS page. I post daily, especially sa TikTok. And then, again, uh, thanks for watching and listening, everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you all in the next episode. Always remember, be passive smart.